Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 205 of the Speared Sundays podcast. Seven weeks in a row now. We're almost at two fucking months. Haven't missed an episode. It's all happening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's all going great. Now, that being said, I need to say something a lot quieter, okay? Um, uh... Also, I'm filming this in a slightly different way. If it looks better, tell me. If it looks worse, tell me. Um, now, uh, my uh, studio that I'm in uh, is rumored to be a garage. A lot, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk around saying that this studio is a garage. Now, while I am firmly on team studio. The world's against me, and I'm used to that. I'm used to everyone being against me, but as always, I will be proven right in the end, all right? Now, that being said, uh, I need to say this quieter because now there is a big point against me about this not maybe perhaps potentially allegedly not being a studio and it could be a garage, even though clearly it's a studio. If you film things in it, if you record in it, that's what really makes it a studio, okay? Right? You don't soundproof a garage and then all of a sudden it turns into a studio. No, that, that's a soundproof garage, all right? You fucking idiot. What makes it a studio is the equipment inside it, not the... Whatever. What I'm saying is there's a black mark against my anti-garage argument and that black mark is the neighbours making noise complaints. <laughs> so I, w- I, want you, I want you to know that... Even if you're like the biggest Spearhead Sundays fan, right? Even if you you listen every Sunday, every week, really, fuck it. Even if you support me on Patreon and you get the podcast early, you don't get it as early as my neighbours do. And they listen to every episode. <laughs> if you know, they listen to every episode. And that's that's the world, isn't it? You know? Some people, uh, they, they work real hard to buy a house. They get a mortgage. They pay it off for 30 years. And then, you know, they, they sign up for a 30-year mortgage. And then, you know what, seven years into the mortgage, some cunt rocks up, moves in next door, and all of a sudden you listen to a podcast every Friday, live in real time. And you know what? I would call that a benefit, a perk, you know, a bit of free entertainment. Others might call the landlord and complain. <laughs> Might call the landlord and complain, but you know what, ladies and gentlemen, that is life. Uh, my YouTube's figure drops July 31. That is coming up very soon at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Do the math, Google it, work out when that is. That does mean that that might not be your July 31. Uh, it's America's July 31, so make sure you do check that, whatever it is. I think... Australia is a different day. Other countries are surely different days. So just uh, work it out, Google it. I'm not even going to say or estimate what time that is in Australia because I don't know, all right? 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time on America's July 31, potentially not yours, all right? That's uh, really cool. I'm excited for that to come out. And, uh, man, I've uh, um, I've been having a good week. Let, let me tell you, next getting better. You know, strong neck Spears is is making a swift recovery. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm going to have, I I will once again have the strongest neck in the game. You guys counted me out. It's impossible. I will, I will maintain that moniker, you know. There's long neck, there's wide neck. Guess what? There's a new neck in the game. It's strong neck. Okay. And your girl gives me good neck. (laughs) because She loves my strong neck. All right. And that's how it's going to be, okay? Been going to the uh, to the the physio, and it's been going great. He's been putting needles in my neck, and every time he does it, I have intrusive thoughts. One, is he going to put a needle in too deep and I become a quadriplegic? Would I still be funny telling jokes like Stephen Hawking? Probably not, okay? Two, uh, is he actually... Go- I'm face down, right, on the massage chair. So, so every time he goes... To get the needles out, my brain can't stop thinking, oh, what if he brings a knife and he just kills me and that's it? You know, I don't. I, I know that I'm not the rock. I'm not going to hear a knife unsheathing and then spring into action. I'll go, gee, those needles sound weird, and then I'll be dead. 
and that's how I'll go. But I, 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 I feel like that's a very unlikely scenario. But those are the things that I think when I put my trust in a stranger. You? Probably not. And I would say that's a good thing. Because sometimes all I want to do is lie down in the massage chair and relax, but my brain keeps thinking, what if he has a knife and he's going to kill you? It'll be my fifth session next week, and that's the only thing I'll be thinking. (laughs) He doesn't even give off murderer vibes. That's just my head. Another, I always think about other people killing me for no reason. All the time. There's something wrong with me, dude. I, uh, whenever I'm at the train station, which is never because of COVID, but when I used to be there, when I would wait at the platform and the train would be pulling up, I always think, what if someone fly kicks me in the back right before the train pulls up and that's how I go? Every time. I can't go near a cliff without thinking the person next to me is going to throw me off. I can't do that shit. It's like, I, I don't know what it is. It doesn't make me nervous or scared. Like, I don't actually fear that that will happen to me because I know that it's insane. But whenever I'm in a situation like that, my brain goes, you know someone could easily fly kick you off the building, yeah? And my brain goes, yeah, but that would never happen. And then my uh, my brain goes, yeah, but just so you know. I don't need to know that, dude! Um, Yeah, so Strong Neck Spears is coming back. I've almost made a full recovery. And you know what else? You know what else? I've decided that after reading all of the fucking shit on gyms, I'm not going back to to a gym until there's until this is like over over. Not when restrictions are lifted a little bit, when this shit is gone. I'm not going back to a gym cuz that seems to be where you fucking get it. All right? So, uh, I've decided I'm going to set up a home gym. Now, a home gym sounds amazing, right? When you have money, which I do not because I don't know if you guys have ever paid for a tour and then sold zero tickets, but then you had to keep paying for everything you booked in. I have, all right? And uh, let me tell you, there's not much room in the budget for home gym after those expenses, you know? Have you ever booked a national tour just for the fun of booking it but and then just gone, you know what? I don't want to do the show. <laughs> I have. And you know what? If I was in a, if I was my accountant, I would pull my own hair out. So there's not much money, not much of a budget for the home gym, okay? What I have managed to scrape up is I managed to scrape up a very cheap bench and dumbbells and <laughs> that's it. And that's my home gym. So I am going to be ex Exclusively doing dumbbell workouts. I'm going to be one of those one of those fitness influencer cunts, bro. You don't need to you don't need to do this exercise or that exercise. All you need is a dumbbell. You got a door. You got a gym. You got a dumbbell. You got a gym. That's going to be me. I am literally. I have a bench and a, a dumb like dumbbell bars and then a bunch of weights I can pull on and off of the dumbbells. And that is the cheapest setup I could find. That's the cheapest. Bro, I have a sneaking suspicion that gym weights are a fucking rot. Because if you really think about it, I'm not talking about machines or benches, stuff that needs to be like well-made and safe, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about literally just weights because if you think about it, What you're just buying is a hunk of metal. Why does like 10 kilos of just, it would be like ugly pig iron. All it, all it has to do is weigh what it says, right? It doesn't, it's not jewelry. There's no diamonds in it. It has no function other than being heavy. All right. It's some cunt pouring liquid metal into a mold and then giving it to me. Why is it so expensive? I feel like they must be absolutely printing money doing that shit. It's going to be the lowest quality fucking metal you can find and they just jack up the price, right? You know who I really felt sorry for when I ordered all this shit? I ordered like, it wasn't that much stuff, but in one package it'd be really heavy. So it would have been like in total 
60, 80 kilos of like weights. Or probably less than that. I don't know. Because I'm not. Yeah, it'd be like 60 kilos of, of metal, right? That arrived. I felt so sorry for the fucking delivery man, you know? Like, you don't want a surprise workout sprung on you like that, do you? He's like, what have you got in here? I'm like, oh, just metal, bro. Just, hey, you know what I've got in here? You know what i got in here? I've got the death of your spine. That's what I have. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do today is try and deliver something and then just fucking snap. You know? That's what I did to a poor delivery man. I felt very sorry. By the way, uh, the, the, uh, the Australia Post guy that uh, did a little bit of free demolition for me, um, I, have never, I haven't seen him since. And we have, a, we have Australia Post coming like all the time because of deliveries to you guys. There's a still a little bit of shit coming with Australia Post. And sometimes we receive things because I'm doing all my shit online now. And uh, I think that man lost his job and that makes me feel very bad, which is a shame. But it is also his fault. I don't know. I felt, just felt sorry for the cunt. It was his first, first week on the job. He demolishes my fucking wall and then he gets fired. I didn't complain or anything like that. I just think they were like, yeah, so we don't want you. I feel like that's kind of bull. Is that bullshit? Maybe not. I guess, I guess that is the one thing he, he, he doesn't have to do. He's like, hey, so all we want you to do is take this box there. And then he's like, oh, so that's it. Yep, just take the box there. And he's like, so did, did you also want me to destroy the homes of people I delivered to? And they went, look, it's not specifically a rule, but it is looked down upon here. And then the guy who works at Australia Post, who is also a bricklayer, is like, I mean, more work for me, bro. You know, that guy is now my regular postman. The, the cunt who fixed my wall, he, he got two jobs out of that transaction, right? New Australia Post guy rocks up, demolishes my brick wall, gets fired. Then they hire a guy to fix the wall and to take this cunt's route. This dude got two jobs. He's printing money. He must be so happy. I remember he knocked on my door and I was like, oh, did you, do you need, do you need my approval to do something else? Cause he came back like three or four times in a row to fix the wall. I'm like, oh, what else do you need? He goes, oh, nothing actually. This is for you. And then I was like, oh, and my first thought, I'm so dumb. I was like, oh, he's giving me a gift for being nice. Fucking self-absorbed loser. Oh, I was such a nice person to the bricklayer that he came back the next day to give me a fucking gift. Get my head out of my ass, me. Idiot. And he goes, no, this is, I'm, I'm, your, I'm on your route now. And I was like, oh, fucking awesome. Great, man. So that's what's happening in my life. I'm setting up the home gym and uh, I'm still taking this week off lifting until my neck's all good. I think next week's my... Uh, my last session with the guy, and then I'm, I'm back to being strong neck spears. You counted me out. Big necks coming back. You fucking watch, dude. You fucking watch. What else has been happening? Kanye's lost his mind. I feel sorry for that cunt. I saw him having his big meltdown, and then I tweeted a few jokes about it, and then I was just like, ah, I think I'm just punching down on the mentally unstable. Poor bastard. Bipolar's a bitch, huh? Um, it's, it's pretty, it's so funny seeing how people can just distort anything to align with what they believe. You know what I mean? Like so many people, most people to, to actually, you know what, to Twitter's credit, most people are like, okay, Kanye, this isn't funny anymore. I don't think this is good. I don't want to read it anymore. It's making me sad. I feel sorry for his kids and his wife, right? The first few times, Twitter was just having fun. It was all memes, all jokes, big laugh. This time around, people were like, oh, 
It's not fun to throw rocks at the homeless guy anymore. It just makes me sad. You know, it was that vibe, right? But some people I was seeing, the 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 craziest shit that I saw was actually not what Kanye was saying. It was the people that were trying to say that he wasn't having a manic episode. Like the dude's diagnosed bipolar. We literally know that, okay? And bipolar means... Up, 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 I can fly, I'm God. Down, 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 I want to kill myself. That's what it is. Up and down, you cycle, and, and as you get older, it us- the cycles usually become, they, they, if you're unmedicated, it's really interesting. What happens with bipolar is if you're unmedicated and you cycle, right, what happens is each cycle literally damages the brain this is all this is all true if the each cycle damages the brain so if it's unmedicated and you keep cycling what happens is the the first few cycles won't be too bad and this is like years and years and years and years of stuff it's not it doesn't happen rapidly but what happens is each cycle damages the brain a teeny teeny tiny bit but that damage makes the next cycle further up or down, right? Some some people are some people have it are usually more up, some people are usually more down, but generally you cycle up and down, right? And and if it's unmedicated, untreated, what happens is the cycles not only become worse in terms of how further either side they go, they also become more frequent as you as you age it's not really an age thing it's more just uh, how how many times you have cycled without it being treated so that's why you can see people that are that are just fucking insane all the time because they've cycled so far and so often that it almost becomes their life that cycling um and not ev- not everyone with bipolar has it that bad there's like mild cases and extreme cases, but it's a uh, it's a real thing, and it's it's a shame to see him so affected by it. And the, I think the issue is that uh, just because they're manic doesn't mean everything they say is going to be crazy or wrong. But it is everything they do say is going to have this inflated sense of emotion or or uh, self belief behind it. That's why he's going, I'm going to be president 2020. In his head, he's literally going to be president 2020. He will do it. In his mind, there is no way that he can lose. He 100% will fucking do that shit in his head. And that, and reality doesn't really connect in his, in, in someone with bipolar's head while they are manic or when they're having a depressive episode. Um, it's a really, sorry, I'm turning my volume up here. It's a really interesting and sometimes sad disorder that a lot of people get, right? Um, but what's what's the craziest shit about that is the people trying to rationalize the manic things that he's saying. So I saw one, a lot of people were saying, oh, he's not crazy. This is a reasonable reaction to what goes on in Hollywood, all the pedophile elites. And it's like, Okay, look, undoubtedly, all right, I'm not about to pull a Crystal Lee on you guys. <laughs> undoubtedly, that shit is fucking going on. And I think that it would, if you're, so, look, I mean, if you're Kanye, yeah, and you marry into the Kardashian family, they are a royal fa- At this point, the Kardashians is America's royal family in in terms of, like, their how, they, how that family seems to have its own culture, own customs, right? The customs being show your tits to the world, make heaps of money, uh, make teenage girls feel like shit, fuck a black dude, get pregnant, and then he leaves you because you're nuts, right? That seems to be the uh, the culture of that family, right? Now, if you marry into it and you have ch- a child with one of them, I mean, the the queen of them, pretty much, the, the matriarch of that family, Kim Kardashian, if you sit back and one day you go, Hang on a second. Literally, every single female in that family has been sexualized the minute it's legal, and even way before that, 
sexualize so much, encourage so much to become an object. I mean, let's be real. The Kardashians of make made their empire off objectifying themselves. It's like, yes, they might be incredible business women too, right? I think they're incredibly smart and they're incredible business women, but at the end of the day, everything they have stems to objectifying themselves. I e.g. the ultimate objectification, Kim Kardashian's sex tape, right? That's where it all fucking stems from. If you look at that and you have daughters in this family and you uh, are also one of the most famous men on the planet, because that's the thing, this Kanye thing is a little bit new to the Kardashians, right? They've been famous men, but none of them have come close to the fame of the Kardashian family. Kanye's like the first man into this family that is married into this, that can actually compete with them fame-wise. So what's going to happen, he's not dumb, is their children are like going to be so unbelievably famous, it you can't even really comprehend it. It's going to be beyond anything we've ever seen before. I really think that. The child of one of the most famous musicians in the fucking world, the most the most famous musicians, critically acclaimed, the most published and spoken about rapper, good for good and bad reasons, in the fu- on the fucking planet, and one of, if not the most famous woman on the planet, and I would say that she would only maybe be eclipsed in fame by. Uh, Kylie Jenner, who's in that family, right? The spawn, the child of the two most famous people on the fucking planet, you would be thinking, how the fuck do I raise a healthy child in this environment, right? Where they are going to be encouraged, if not by every female in their family, right? The media, the public, uh, everyone surrounding them to to objectify and sexualize themselves, right? Because that's what the media wants, which is ultimately what the people want, right? Or the type of people who are obsessed with this shit want. Uh, and then, and then, if they look around and they see the only female role models in their life, like in that inner circle. Their, their mother, their auntie, their grandmother, every single female role model in their life, step their stepsisters, everything about it, right? Every single one of them objectify and sexualize themselves for money and don't do anything other than that, right? And I'm not necessarily saying making money out of being sexy is a bad thing. But if you're trying to raise a child to be their own person and to have skills and abilities, you look at the Kardashians, it seems like that is their only ability and that's not necessarily what you want your child to learn and do and replicate. And when you add in the fact that Kris Jenner is the manager of all of these bitches and has essentially orchestrated the objectification of her entire family for money. If I'm marrying into that family and I give, and I, you know, my wife give birth, gives birth to daughters, I would be thinking, holy fuck, how do I stop my children from becoming whores? That'd be a big concern because it's, it's like, it's one thing to decide to do that and to decide to capitalize on that if uh, it's like not, I'd say it's, 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 it's a little bit better to, if you're like, if you're a model or if you are doing the OnlyFans thing or whatever, it's a little bit more acceptable to do that, I feel, or a little bit, not acceptable, a little bit healthier for you to do that if 
uh, you're not like surrounded by it and pushed into it. And, and that seems like your only option. You know what I mean? If that's your only option, that's a bad way to get into this shit. So if you have a very, very young, impressionable girl and that's all they are surrounded by, fairly fucking likely that's what they're going to grow up to to replicate and do. And if you're a good Christian man like Kanye says he is, that's your worst nightmare. Um, so I understand him freaking out and saying, oh, you'll never get my daughters to do porn. They'll, they'll never do the cover of Playboy. Because, I mean... I would be freaking out about that shit too. That being said, just because those things that Kanye is making makes a little bit of sense when you think about it, doesn't mean the cunt's not also having a fucking manic episode saying that he's going to win the presidency. Just because a guy who's stabbing a woman to death says two plus two is four and that's true, doesn't mean he's not stabbing a woman to death. He's not crazy. He said two plus two is four. And it is four. <laughs> it's like he's literally eating her eyeballs. He's like, yeah, but he's speaking facts. So I think that the whole Kanye thing just needs to be... I don't know what the answer is. You can't force somebody to medicate themselves. You can't force somebody to get help. They can only... You can only help present them with the option and ultimately they need to take it. Because if you go around fucking locking these people up or forcing them into care or forcing drugs into them, that does so much more damage and is so much more traumatic. And that's like, that's what we used to do with with crazy people is just fucking, all right, this bitch is off her nutter, chuck her in the room, put her in a jail cell, pump her full of drugs against her will. I mean, that shit still does go on. In Australia, I know, I know boys who have been through that. And it fucks them up more. Doesn't help. So uh, I hope the best for him. And the only thing I can say is there's going to be a banger album coming out very fucking soon. All right? What else has been happening here? I had a few other things that I wanted to speak about. Let me check my notes here if you'll excuse me. Oh, oh man, yeah. So I have a Spears vs. America update. Um, now, uh, quick recap on Spears vs. America. We released it early this year. I flew to America. I filmed an entire TV pilot. It's streaming on my website now, uh, lewspears.com, if you want to go check it out. Uh, the full pilot, it's basically just a, a pilot episode is a proof of concept. So you make a pilot episode and you take it to a network and you go, look what we did with no money. Imagine what we could do with yours. Uh, we could make more money and create a bigger series and, and do it even better, right? So that's what it is. And that's what we did. And the pilot was fucking amazing genuinely one of the best things I've ever made. Uh, shot it with Connor Fairclough, um, and he he was the, the producer and, and uh, shot everything and edited it together, and um, it's fucking super, super good. It's exactly what I want to do. If someone was like, man, here's a million dollars, what do you want to do with it? I would be like, I am doing this. Um, so that went really well. And that's like, you know, me getting on the news in America. That was me doing that fake classroom stuff, all the Vox pop, all the shit that like that, that I started with and grew from and, and, uh, have been doing for ages. That's the show, right? Spears versus America. So, um, Screen Australia have an initiative called Skip Ahead and Skip Ahead is, uh, a initiative for online creators who have more than, uh, well, it used to be for people with more than 100,000 subscribers. And when they realized that that pretty much uh, excluded everyone except for uh, all the boys you know that I frequently collaborate with, myself, Frenchie, all those boys, um, they lowered it down to 50,000, right? So whatever. Okay, I apply. Skip ahead. It's to help uh, online creators uh, create uh, the next series. And they'll give you... Uh, I think it was up to $100,000 to create a series, right? So I apply for that and I show them the, the pilot and I go, man, this is, and, and, and the series goes on YouTube, right? So I'm like, dude, I have the perfect pitch. I'm going to fucking nail this. I've never applied for it before. I'm going to smash this shit. I got a whole pilot that has millions and millions of views. It's literally 
borderline guaranteed success, except I call it Spears versus Australia because obviously Screen Australia, they're only going to fund stuff within Australia, which is totally fair enough. So I apply for it and I had this whole concept, did this, send them the clips. Anyway, uh, they said no. Uh, they're not going to fund it. Uh, and they won't say why. Uh, I had to tick a lot of boxes. We had women on the production. That was a big criteria because it's government money. you got to tick a lot of... A lot of fucking boxes, right? So I, I did that. I had uh, representation. I had women working for me. Uh, I had, uh, or working with me rather, I don't like saying for me, had women on the production. I had uh, diverse uh, sexualities on the production. Uh, I even had, uh, I even ticked the box for the Aboriginal representation and uh, reached out to, I won't ruin the segment idea because I'm still probably going to use it, but, you know, I had... Uh, Aboriginal uh, rep representatives say, yep, we're keen to do this. Uh, and they said no. Uh, now, I'm not going to... The, the P They haven't announced who's going to get it. But I know who is not going to get it because I know a lot of people who, who applied. And uh, it is all of us. Now, I don't get it. Fair enough. Okay, all of the other boys not getting it, not one of us, I start to think, ooh, a little bit sus. Now, I'm not going to go hard on this thing because I don't know who got it, right? They're going to announce that at some point. But it is a, a yet another example of industry blocking us out. And I'm not just speaking for me here. I'm speaking for all the online boys who have uh, built this shit from nothing, have done it without industry, have done it. Uh, in spite, despite the industry uh, trying to push us back and actively denying opportunities, ignoring, blocking, this and that, we've still done it. And uh, it is a shame to me, right, I felt like the application of Spears versus America would have had to be, now I obviously can't say this for sure because I don't know who got it, but I would have, I will eat my fucking hat if another production who applied had a fully filmed TV pilot that was self-funded, a TV pilot that had multiple clips hitting multiple millions of views. If someone else has applied with that, I'll eat my fucking hat. So that's a real fucking bummer uh, because that, to me, was the only chance that that series has of getting funding from any kind of grant, right? Now, I'm not talking about networks. We can obviously pitch to networks, streaming services, all that. But in terms of, like, a grant, something for online creators with a proven body of work, that have to demonstrate online success in the space, if I can't get that grant, there are no opportunities for me in this country. That's it. This shit is why I have my sets, my sights set on America because none of this fucking box ticking industry circle jerk bullshit affects it as much as it does here, right? In America, cunts just want to make money. And what makes money? The best thing. That's why I want to go there. So that's frustrating and that's annoying and I'm not going to lie, well, lie when I say that fucking sucks. However, we self-funded Spears vs. America. It has millions of views. The clips are going viral every single day. Uh, it the clips that we have put on get hundreds of thousands of views every day. That's not a lie. I see the stats. That is insane. We, uh, it cost us like over $20,000 to film because we had to fly out a whole team to LA for fucking two weeks of combination, renting gear, this, that. Really, really expensive to do if you're an independent. Uh, but uh, because you guys stepped up and you bought the merch and you bought the stream and the download, we have almost made that money back. So it's we're going to recoup on that on those costs. So that's 
fucking amazing. No pilot episode does that at all ever. You make the pilot and then you maybe get picked up and that's how you recoup the losses. Thanks to you guys. We're not 20 grand in a hole. We did that shit. Thank you very much. And it gives me confidence to do this shit some other way. Now, whether that's getting picked up by a streaming service or a network, that's priority one for me. So I'm having a meeting. We're going to talk about that, see see what the game plan is, see what we can if, if we can show it to people. Now, obviously, even if it does get picked up, this shit wouldn't be filmed until travel is open because if I was doing Spears versus America, obviously the borders need to be fucking open. And if I'm doing a Spears versus Australia, same shit, right? So I, it's not really a time thing. It's not really something that I'm uh, like focused on fixing now, uh, but it is something that we fortunately on the bright side have a lot of time to plan for and pitch and show people. So that's priority one. Man, priority two... Crowdfund is another option as well. Uh, another option is if my, uh, I mean, whenever tours come back and uh, if, if a, then my next comedy special goes well, self-funding is another option as well. So we're going we're gonna to sort it out, but I wanted to give you guys an update because I, I have been asked about it a little bit. Spears versus America, Australia. The, ba- the Spears versus Concept TV series is, uh, is definitely still being worked on, and that's the, the uh, next major update that I have for you is that we got knocked back by the uh, Screen Australia program that seemingly on paper was fucking perfect for me. But... Uh, in this country, at least, the, uh, the, the straight white male and the comedian who says things or anything uh, doesn't get much of a look over here. And that is a very sad thing for comedy. And I'm not even talking, I'm not even talking about me. I was like, when I got rejected, I was like, oh, well, one of the boys must have had a good pitch. All of us. None of us got a single opportunity. Now, if I am in charge of that grant and they go, you have a million dollars to give away to people with a proven track record in the online space who know how to do this shit, because this isn't like a grant for beginners, right? This is for people who already have a large online audience, now, when they first brought in this shit, it was limited to people with over 100,000 subscribers. I wasn't even eligible for it when they brought it in, right? So I was like, man, that's what I'm going to work towards. I'm going to get over 100K. I'm going to apply for that shit, and I'm going to get it. Now, they did that for a few years, and then they lowered it down to, uh, I think it was 50,000 subscribers or, right? 50,000 is still pretty big, right? Or a combined... Uh, I, th- I believe it was a combined 50,000 from all- each group member's thing. So that's like some kind of who has 7K on Insta, 11,000 on Facebook. Do you know what I mean? Like th- I-, I feel like they realized, oh, only these guys are eligible for it, but we can't give them any money because we don't want them to do well. And that's what it seems like. So that's a bummer, um, but I'm not giving up. And, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm also, that's just what I'm feeling now. I'm hesitant, I'm hesitant to trash the skip ahead thing until I see who gets it. Because who knows, you know, maybe some incredibly talented people who did have a, a better pitch than me, who did have a stronger concept than me got it. That's entirely possible. Uh, and this could just be me being salty. <laughs> um, but it is very unlikely. All right. So that's the Spears vs. America uh, update. Rest assured, this shit's getting done some way or another. You know, whether it's me funding it myself, me doing a crowdfund again, or getting it picked up by a network, the, the fucking concept and the idea and the support that it had, had and still has, is so much stronger than any fucking government pen pusher. It's going to be made, whether that's... A few years from now, whether that's 10 years from now, this shit's getting done and it's getting done right. All right? So that's my update. Uh, Fear not. We will succeed because we can fucking do anything, bro. If I've learned one thing from all of this industry trying to push me out, 
and all the other boys as well, trying to push all of us out and are still doing well because of you, man, because there's one thing, you know, they can ignore me. They can ignore us. They can ignore all of the creators. You know who they can't ignore? You. And that is the, that is the ultimate truth of it. Long term, they cannot ignore you. They cannot ignore what the people want. They can block their ears and pretend we don't exist and laugh in their fucking group chats and all that kind of shit. But at the end of the day, the people want this shit. They don't want all of this fucking sanitized, government-approved, box-ticking bullshit. It sucks. It's bad. ABC Comedy, the channel, just folded. I would argue if they gave any of us a shot, they might be still breathing. But they will literally die than rather... They would literally rather die than give us a shot. So that's why uh, I'm always so grateful to you guys for showing your support and being vocal in it, you know? Amazon Prime just put up a post. Oh, who should be in the next season? Guess who the comments are full of? Melbourne Comedy Festival just put up an Instagram post. Who needs a special next? Guess who the comments are full of? It's not any of these industry comics. It's us. They can ignore us. They cannot ignore you. So be vocal with what you want. Tell them what you want. And that shit will work. All right? Uh, what else do I want to talk about here? Dude, I am, I'm, in the, I'm, in the fucking, I'm in the doghouse of my girl uh, and I deserve it. Accidentally left the front door open while I was recording Luke and Lewis. Cat got out. And my girlfriend, you know what? I'm going to reframe this from how much I fucked up. I'm going to reframe this story to be an ad about how good uh, the Beats noise cancelling is. Headphones. Bro, Beats Studio, this is not sponsored. I just need to say the, the Beats headphones noise cancelling technology is next level. You can't hear anything. You can't hear anything, bro. Best noise cancelling in the fucking game. I could literally vibe my way through a home invasion. If, if I was being robbed and they just didn't come into my office while I was using Beats noise cancelling headphones, I would have a great time and wouldn't even fucking notice, right? Because let me tell you how good the Beat Studio noise cancelling headphones is. You could be recording a podcast. So you're not even really listening to music. It's not constant sound, you know? Luke will talk, then he'll be silent while I talk. There's a lot of silence in a podcast. It's like a normal conversation. But the noise cancelling is so good that even when you're listening to nothing, no noise on low volume, you won't hear anything happening around you. If your girlfriend comes home, sees the cat on the front porch, slams the brakes, opens the door, slams the car door and runs at the cat, tack tries to tackle the cat, misses, gets her knees incredibly dirty and rips her tights, guess what you're going to hear? Nothing. And if then if your girlfriend then chases the cat into the backyard, which, by the way, is literally where you are, separated by paper-thin glass, if your girlfriend sees you through the gra glass and screams your name while you're wearing Beats Studio noise-canceling headphones, guess what you're going to hear? That. Nothing. You're not going to hear shit. You won't hear anything. And if she bashes on the window to get you to come out and help her catch the cat because she knows if she doesn't catch the cat, it's gone forever and it will die, guess what you're going to hear? Blissful peace. Nothing. You won't hear anything. And if your girlfriend screams and bashes on the window, you will hear nothing. And then... If your girlfriend spends the next 20 minutes in the backyard chasing after the cat, trying to tackle it, getting dirt all over her nice new outfit and yelling your name, you will hear 
absolutely 0% of that noise. And that's because the Beats noise cancelling software is so good that you will have a big fight with your girlfriend and you will be 100% in the wrong and there is nothing you can do about that because you let the cat out and you couldn't hear her screaming for your help. If she was being murdered in the backyard, I wouldn't know about it until three hours later when I decided to check out what's going on in the backyard. Oh, my girlfriend hasn't been home for a while. Oh, look, her car's there. The front door's open too. Wonder where the cat is. Oh, she's been dead. And then you go check the window. She's just scrawled, help me, Lewis, in her own blood on the window, hoping that I would see it because she tried screaming, but that didn't work. So I'm in trouble, guys, and I deserve it. But don't let that distract you from the fact that Beats have the best noise cancelling in the game. You have to be happy with that. That's just, I mean, I'm a very satisfied customer. I can't hear shit. It's, act. you know, oh, fuck. Shut up, Siri. That scared the shit out of me. My phone's talking to me. You know how good the noise cancelling is? I would actually recommend maybe don't get them if you're like, if you're planning on wearing them outside the house because uh, so often if I wear, I love wearing headphones when I'm out because it's like the ultimate, I don't really want to talk to you move. You know what I mean? Like if you see me wearing headphones, I'm, I don't want to talk to you. You know, like this isn't fans. I love meeting fans. I'm, I'm just talking like just generally, would you like help, sir? Fuck off. Check this out. That's the vibe. Yeah. But uh, it uh, often if I'm wearing them, I have to take them off to like cross the street because I can't hear shit and it puts you off. Uh but other than that, they're, they're pretty good. If you love noise cancelling, bro, chuck them on. <laughs> All right. Uh, miscellaneous bit at the end. Let's get into it, shall we? If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. Very sorry about it, but I do have to do it. I'm contractually obliged to. Uh, it is the part where I read out life advice. Uh, I try to answer life advice questions sent in by you, the loyal listener. Um, if you want to send an email to uh, the podcast, please do. I'm actually running low. Uh, so if you have a funny story, if you need some life advice, if you have a question, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Ellie wspears.com all right podcast at loosespears.com that's the email please do send it through if you've got something good you have a very good chance of getting on the show all right and if you want to be anonymous please do tell me uh okay hey lewis uh i've been a fan of you since the very early face beef days thank you and used to listen to your podcast when they were audio only oh man i remember those days you know i used to literally just open up voice notes on my phone and scream into that and and uh it you know it, it was kind of the same quality <laughs> i'm like oh i should spend heaps of money on a microphone when really this shit was just me screaming into a phone in an airbnb anyway last podcast you mentioned that you put on weight i'm six foot two 25 years old and much skinnier than you jesus christ you must look like a fucking skeleton bro a skeletons emailed the show if you look skinnier than me you need to sort that out, dude. I've always been genetically skinny, so I feel that. In the past, I've absolutely binged food for weeks on end with little weight gain. Yeah, I doubt it, bro. Uh, because I bet you just feel like that because I've also, oh, I've binged food. I haven't put on any weight. No, you haven't. You have just eaten like a normal person for a couple of weeks and uh, that's it. You need to eat way more way more than a normal person when you are tall because you're not a normal person, you're massive. You know that at my height, just to maintain my weight, I have to eat so many thousands of calories just to maintain my underweight status. If I want to put on weight, it's nuts, the amount of food I have to eat. What recommendations could you give to me to put on weight and what does your diet consist of now and what are your future goals okay so my diet's been really shit recently uh and i'm talking from a weight gain perspective so i haven't been eating badly i have been not eating that's my that's my, my biggest thing is i can literally function completely fine off two meals a day that is actually my default my girlfriend so often now that we live together she never realized this so often I just don't eat 
and I, I literally don't get hungry. I don't enjoy eating. Um, in fact, I think that I'm a little bit happier eating two meals a day. And I'm talking breakfast, lunch, no dinner. That's actually what I did all last week. It's bad, okay? And what's really bad about it is that I don't suffer from it at all. Like I don't get hungry. I don't feel like I'm sleeping poorly. I feel fine. The meals that I do eat are very healthy. Like I'll have in the morning, I have a, a porridge with peanut butter in it and banana. So it's quite a big breakfast. And then for lunch, I'll have like pasta bolognese with good meat sauce, a lot of meat uh, and, and cheese. And actually literally could eat just that for the rest of my life every day, those two meals. And I would be fine. I would look like shit, but I would be fine. I did that all last week. Um, and that's bad. I don't recommend you doing that. That is not good. Um, but I do know how to put on weight really well. I just don't enjoy doing it. Uh, it's actually not too bad when I put on weight. I can maintain it pretty well. But if I once I lose it, putting it back on is such a bitch for me. But I do know how to do it. So what what really really worked for me when I was actually when I was eighteen, I did this. I was like six seven, and I literally weighed seventy kilos. So underweight for that height. Like, like I put my body weight into the BMI and it was like in the incredibly unhealthy range. It, it's like literally anorexic stats. Six, seven, 70 kilos. That's what I actually weighed. Um, and I remember I did go mad. It's a diet. It's a, a gallon of milk a day. And that is literally what I did for a month. I did that a gallon of milk a day. That is four liters of milk. Now, I deal with lactose fine. I can have a liter of milk in a day. I won't even fart, bro. I am. I got an iron stomach. I am fine. I know a lot of people can't handle that shit, but I was fine with it. Um, <clears throat> that's how white I am. Um, so I did that, and I put on, in three or four weeks, five kilos. Uh, that's how malnourished my body was, and I looked great. I was also working out five days a week, uh, doing heavy lifting. So for me... It doesn't matter how much I eat. I can eat so much food. If I'm not lifting, uh, I won't put on weight. And I've, I, when I was home, I, that's why I've started setting up the home gym because I tried doing body weight stuff. I would get up, I would do push-ups, I do tricep dips, I do a really good body weight workout. I wouldn't put on any fucking weight. I would just get stronger. The only way I actually physically look different and put on kilos is when I lift heavy weights and actually tear my muscles because the push-up thing it doesn't like for me anyway it doesn't like tear my muscle because I'm so light anyway and uh uh it doesn't put that much of a strain on it it's just hard when you do heaps of them I need to do like low 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 amount of reps reps really high weight that's what works for me and that's what I would recommend for any skinny person you get in there gallon of milk a day and do uh, an exercise program called starting strength. Now you do need a gym for that. And I would also recommend a personal trainer to, for the first couple of weeks at least to teach you how to do all of the lifts, because if you don't do squats, deadlifts, bench press properly, you can hurt yourself. Um, and personal trainers are really, really good. If you're new to the gym to teach you how to do these exercises after the first, like two Two weeks to a month, a personal trainer becomes useless unless you're really struggling with motivation and the only way you can go to gym is because you're paying someone to also be there. Um, Diet-wise, what uh, a really fucking awesome breakfast is what I've been eating is like a lot of porridge and you put heaps of peanut butter, like a giant spoon of peanut butter in there and then a full banana. That's like a really, really good breakfast. And I would say for like anyone, even if you're not trying to put on weight and it doesn't have to be a banana, any kind of fruit is like such a good fucking start to your day. You will feel great all day eating that unless you hate peanut butter. Um, but that's awesome. You get protein, you get some fruit, you get uh, milk, you get oats. It's like the best breakfast ever. Um, and then for like, uh, 
for like lunch, what I found really worked for me was I, I would make pasta, like a big serving of pasta, and I would have a huge, uh, it'd be like literally 50, almost 50 50 meat sauce to pasta. And in the meat sauce, I would have, uh, it'd be beef uh, and pork and then sauce. And I would put in egg. Like I'd literally, while I'm cooking the sauce, crack a fuckload of eggs, put it in there. Cause I don't really like eggs that much. I don't like eating them. I don't like eating a lot of eggs. I can only have like two, but if you crack fucking six eggs into your bolognese sauce, you won't even taste it. And that puts so much more protein into what you were already eating without you even realizing it. And then you just put a fuckload of cheese into that season it however you want when you're making the sauce and that tastes awesome. That is stacks of calories, heaps of protein. Um, and that's what I would do for my lunch. Uh, I'm also drinking weight gain shakes in between these two a day. Uh, the Max's super size stuff worked really well for me. Now, a lot of people talk shit about protein shakes or mass gainer shakes uh, because you're better off eating food. That is true. But if you're like me and you struggle to eat food, like I, I don't enjoy eating. If I have to eat more than three times a day, it, I, I don't like doing it and it fucks up my whole day actually. So I have three meals a day and then I have two mass gain shakes in between that. And then I might have one snack and that does me. Um, and then for dinner, I will have kangaroo steak and eggs uh, and uh, a side of like steamed vegetables. And that's like it. That's like if you, ha if you have those two shakes with the breakfast and then the pasta and the steak and the eggs and the vegetables, that's like almost 3,000 calories in a day. That is super easy to do because you're having three meals. You can, you can cook the pasta in bulk, which is what I do. I'll cook a whole week's worth of pasta in one go with the sauce. And then the steak you just have to cook once. And then the porridge you don't have to cook at all. I just fucking literally pour oats in, milk in, put peanut butter in, put it in the microwave, and then I eat it. And then I put fruit in. And then that's easy. Um, and that's like a, for me anyway, it's probably not, you know, it's probably not the best diet, but I tell you what, it fucking works. If you do that for a month, you will put on, if you're new and you're really skinny, you will put on five kilos. If you do that religiously every day and you're also lifting heavy weights five, five, three to five times a week. If you're really new, you're better off starting off three times a week doing a program like starting strength. If you're looking for home workouts, I'll be honest, I don't really know what to do. Um, that's why I'm building like a weight weights gym thing. Um, that's what I would recommend. That's that's my diet when I am putting on weight, and that really makes me put on weight really fast, really consistently. And I, when I'm eating like eating like that, I feel great. I don't feel like bloated and fucked. I feel really good because I've got vegetables, I've got meat, I've got uh, my my grains with the oats, and then I have heaps of protein. And uh, as long as I'm drinking a lot of water as well, I feel fucking awesome doing that. So that's what I recommend if you're trying to put on weight. That's what works for me. I am not a nutritionist. I'm not a scientist. I used to be a personal trainer. Uh, so that counts for something, but not really. Uh, that's what worked for me. All right. Uh, and I think I'm going to end it there. Yeah, that's about an hour. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, please do consider supporting me on Patreon when I can't do shows and all that kind of stuff. That's how we're getting by and that's how we're keeping everything running. That's how we're keeping Keelan and all the boys in a job. So Patreon's a way to do it. You get the podcast early. You get all my videos early. And uh, I'm working on, I'm thinking, let me know your thoughts on this because only the people who make it to the end of this will really care. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, I was thinking of maybe doing an extra half an hour of the podcast just for Patreon supporters. So I do the whole podcast, I do miscellaneous bit at the end, and then here is where I would start the extra half hour for Patreon supporters. If that is something that you would pay for, uh, or you would sign up to Patreon to listen to, an extra half hour of Spearhead Sundays uploaded as probably a separate podcast to only Patreon, uh, let me know if you would like that. And uh, if enough people want it and enough people would pay for it, uh, I'll do it because I want to grow the Patreon and I also want to give more value to the existing Patreon supporters as well. So do let me know if you're on the fence about Patreon or if you're a current supporter and you would like that. 
I'll do it. All right. Thank you. July 31, Lewis Spears U2s. See you later. Have a shit one.